Hey everyone, John Duran here. Sorry I haven't made a video in a while. I've been out of the country. So today I'm going to be showing you a simple scratch tutorial and it's going to make your projects and games a lot more official and more fun to play. Um, it involves the very beginning and the very ending of your game. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a splash screen. This is the screen players uh, are greeted with when they open the game. So instead of diving straight into the game you have this splash screen. So the way you're going to make this is your first sorry, your first stage is going to be the background of the splash screen. So you're going to go to your backgrounds and you're going to edit this to whatever you want. You can draw pictures, you can import things, anything you want. I've just titled it my game. Your second background is going to be mine is just a yellow screen but it's going to be the background of whatever your game is or whatever level one of your game is. As you can see, I have some simple sprites here, but I'll get to those. Now the play button. This is a cool little um, thing that I use, which you can use the same thing for making an instructions button, and I'll show you how to do it right now. The costume for it is simply a button icon and the word play overlaid over it. You get the icon by clicking import, and under things, it's going to be right here. Now, I've used the text tool to type the word play. You can type in any word you want. For the second one, what I did was I grabbed the indent or button pressed tool and then I made the words red. You'll see how that works in a minute. So, for the scripts, I say when the green flag is clicked, when the game starts, forever if else. And I'm going to say forever if touching mouse or pointer switch to costume 2, else switch to costume 1. What this is going to do is it's going to keep the icon in one state until you're hovering over it, and then it's going to change states. Kind of like a link gets highlighted when you hover over it. So I'm going to click on play game. You can see how it's gray, and when I come and I hover over it, it turns gray and the text turns red. So that's a cool little effect that helps you out. So once you've got that set up, and you can add a lot more to that, for example, you can add a, um icon that when you click on it, it decreases its size by 10% and makes a click noise before the game starts, making it look like you're actually indenting a button and making a noise and stuff. You can go as far as you want. Now, as for actually starting off the game, I would totally recommend broadcasting. Broadcasting is the easiest way to get your game started once you're on a splash screen. So what I'm saying is when sprite 1 is clicked, and you can have a wait one second so that it has time to say indent or something, you're going to broadcast the word game start and hide. That's going to tie up this guy and finish him off. Then all of your other sprites that are involved in the game can be shown with looks tool, be shown the minute they receive this um, broadcast. And as you can see under my stages, when I receive game start, switch to background 2. So now I'm going to just show you how that works. I'm hovering over play, I click on it, and then there we go. We've switched to the game screen, and any sprite that's involved with that is going to start. Now, I've stopped it. Um, if you ever were wondering about this, if you press enter, you'll reset back to the beginning. Undo all of them. So that's how you make a simple sprite screen. Now, to make an instruction screen, it's slightly more complicated. You're going to have this play button um, broadcast the word instructions. It's going to switch to a special background for instructions, and the instructions are going to be visible. You'll have to make a third button called Back, apply the same effects to it, which you can just drag and drop onto it, and make sure you change the values, though, and have the Back button on the instructions page to lead you back to the home screen or straight on to the game. So that's how you do that. Now I'm going to just show you very quickly how to make an end screen. and that's going to be when the players won the game or the players lost the game. Um, more active for the player has lost the game because a lot of times when the player loses the game the sprites just freeze and that's it. So I'm going to make a new sprite and I'm gonna just going to make it a ball because you know I'm a fan of those. <laughs> just one. Um, and the object of the game is going to be to click on the ball. So I'm not even going to apply any scripts onto it when this is clicked show. And when the sprite is clicked, then I'm going to um, broadcast end game. So 
So now that I've broadcast Endgame, I can hide this sprite, hide any other sprite that's visible. And I'm going to come over to my stage. Right now it's plain. You could have other stage backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm going to make a new background. I'm going to call it red. Why not? Red. And I'm going to type in win. It can just as easily be lose. In fact, I'll make it lose. Now I'm going to install a script that says when this is clicked, switch to background 1. When I receive endgame, switch to background 2. The reason you have to use um, broadcast is because you're going inter sprite. You can't have this sprite affecting the background. You can't be in this palette and stick. So now you can see the game starts off like this. Nothing happens. You don't know what to do, so you click on the ball. Aw, oh, you lost. So that's better than just freezing all the sprites up. Now after that point you can then click stop. You can have it go stop all. That'll make sure that your all of your scripts are closed off. It's going to be the same effect though. So that's how you make splash screens and end screens in sprite um uh, in scratch, sorry. My next tutorial is probably going to be on the sensing icon. I don't think I've made one on that yet. So wait until then.